Hi, welcome back to STEM Builders JM. And if you are joining us for the first time, I want to invite you to like and subscribe to this channel. Now, if you are a CSEC examination biology student, trust me, I know the challenges that you're experiencing right now. And I want to help you just navigate um, and jump over some of those hurdles. So today I'll be looking at the digestive system. And this is a topic that is a must study topic for your exam. So let me help you with my 12 plus years of experience, you know, break it down. <laughs> I'm very passionate about the subject, as you know, and um, I'm here to help. So let us begin. So digestion, what is digestion, right? Um, are there different types of digestion? And all of these things will be covered in this video. So what is digestion? It is the breakdown, right, of large particles that cannot be absorbed. And another way to look at it, it is the breakdown of large, complex, insoluble molecules into small, simple, and soluble um, substances. So when you consume your food, which we call ingestion, so taking in of the food, um, you have to break it down, right? In order for your body to be able to use it, all right? So you put that food in your mouth, it's going to have to go through a process to break it down so that you can use it because if you're going to put in a bulla in your mouth, for example, your body's not able to use it in that form. And so digestion is all about breaking it down into something simpler, you know, into something smaller so that you, your body that's able to enter into your bloodstream and that you're able to use it. So all of these terms that I'm talking about, you know, so you have the ingestion, the digestion, you have absorption of the nutrients, and um, then you utilize that, which is what we call assimilation. So when you're embarking on your study of this topic, you definitely have to know the different terms. So again, there are ingestion, digestion, absorption and assimilation. Now, right here on my presentation, as you can see, you have large particles and they cannot be absorbed in that form. So you have the gut, a uh, large particle would be like starch. Starch is a carbohydrate. And from your studies of nutrients, you should remember that it's also a polysaccharide right, which means many sugar units coming together to form this starch, right? Now, this is too large and too complex for the body to absorb. And so digestion takes it through the process where it breaks it down into what we refer to as the end product or simplest form, right? And that would be glucose. Glucose is small, it is simple, and it can be easily absorbed by the blood. So as you can see, starch in the gut can't move, but glucose can. So large particles, example starch, are left in the gut and small particles, example glucose, can go into the bloodstream. So digestion is about breaking down these large, complex, insoluble particles into small, simple, soluble particles. And that is pretty much what digestion is. So I want you to bear those terms in mind as we go through the process. So we're moving from large and complex and insoluble, which means it cannot be dissolved in water, to small, simple, and soluble. And as you should remember also, blood, 90% um, of it is pretty much water. All right, 90% of your plasma is water. All right, so types of digestion. So you have mechanical digestion and you have chemical digestion. So there are two types of digestion. And we're going to go through mechanical digestion first. And this is the part that sometimes trip up students. Yeah, you all know mechanical digestion involves the teeth, right? And um, 
you have different types of teeth. So you have your incisors at the front, your canines on each side, your premolars, and then you have your molars to the back, right? So those are the different types of teeth. We also know that you have two sets of teeth, permanent teeth and temporary teeth, all right? So this mechanical digestion now is actually a physical breaking down or breaking up of the large particles. So remember the beginning of our um, definition, we said you have to move from large to small. So physical digestion does that. So it doesn't change it chemically. It is still dumpling, <laughs> but it's smaller pieces of that dumpling or smaller pieces of that food. So this is the breaking up of large pieces of food into smaller pieces. And that's what happens when you chew. So when you chew, and another name word for chew would be mastication. When you chew your food, you break up the large pieces of the food into smaller pieces. And this is done in your mouth, your buccal cavity, right? By the teeth, chewing or mastication. It can also take place in another way. So there are different um, types or different um, times that mechanical digestion takes place. So the first one is in your mouth, where your teeth actually go to work, chew up the food, breaking it down into smaller pieces. But it can also take place in your stomach. And of course, you don't have no teeth in your stomach. So it's the stomach walls that are going to churn the food, right? No, your stomach walls are powerful, you know. They're powerful because, I mean, sometimes you may hear your, 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 your stomach grumble, <laughs> you know. It can actually produce a sound outside of your body. That's just how incredible your stomach muscles are. So your stomach walls actually will churn the food and that is a physical breakdown converting um, the substance in, that goes inside the stomach into which is more um, solid substance into actually a liquid called chyme. You will also have the action of bile salts in your small intestine and their job is to chop up the fat. Uh, all of this the substances have not been changed chemically. They've only been changed, being changed physically. So they are only being changed from being large to small, right? They're still pretty complex, right? And that complex to simple will not take place until you have chemical digestion. So mechanical digestion, you're able to break up the food physically from large into smaller pieces. All right, and again, to recap, that takes place three ways, in your mouth, using your teeth, in your stomach, the churning action of your stomach walls, and in your small intestine where the bile cells chop up the fat only, all right? Now, chemical digestion. Now, this is where we're gonna move now from the complex and insoluble to the simple and the soluble. So this is now a chemical change taking place, right? So of course, if I chew dumpling and I, I um, expel it or bring it back up, it's still dumpling, gross, but yeah, it's still dumpling. <laughs> it still looks like dumpling, um, perhaps, unless it has started undergoing some kind of chemical change due to chemical substances in our body, which are called enzymes. All right, so chemical digestion, like mechanical digestion, begins in the mouth and it continues in the stomach, in the duodenum, and in the ileum. And all of this is the um, all of this is done by enzymes, which catalyze or speed up the rate of a chemical reaction. So you should remember that animals are heterotrophs, which means they need to take in food. And um, food is pretty much a fuel, you know? You go to the, the gas station to get gas in the car, and so the gas can run. Without the gas, the car can't work. No, your food is just like that. It's fuel for you. It's what allows you to do work because this food is converted into energy. And this energy is in the form of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And this is what you use, this is what the cells use to be able to carry out the different characteristics of life. All right, so raw materials, carbon source for synthesis of macromolecules. And you, of course, you also need essential nutrients like um, iron, sodium, potassium, calcium, nitrogen, all of these things. <laughs> 
So all animals eat other animals, right? Or they eat, sorry, all animals eat other organisms. So you can have herbivores, which eat plants, and um, carnivores, which eat other animals, and the omnivores that eat both plants and animals, right? So all animals eat other organisms because animals are heterotrophs, which mean that they're not able to make their own food. So as a result of that, they have to rely on another organism to provide that food. So be it another animal or it could be plants. All right, once we get food, we have food, it ha food actually moves to four steps, right? So I talked about this earlier, you have to ingest the food, you take it into your mouth, then you digest it mechanically and chemically, and then you absorb the nutrients, and finally you ingest it, okay? So you remove the undigested food. Now, Everybody's got one in terms of a digestive system, right? Well, most animals have one. Um, human digestive system, these are the parts that you need to know. So you can start with the tongue, the parotid gland, the sublingual, sublingual gland, the submandibular gland, <laughs> and all of this kind of makes up your oral cavity. Of course, your pharynx, and then of course the wonderful esophagus going all the way down to your chest cavity and to your stomach. You have your accessory organs, which includes the liver, the gallbladder, the pancreas. And those organs, even though food would not be passing through them, they are extremely important um, for the process. So food would move to your mouth where you ingest it. That food would be chewed, masticated, um, rolled up into a ball, swallowed, passes down, goes into your esophagus, moves to your esophagus by peristalsis, and then goes into your stomach where um, digestion of protein will begin. That food will move from your stomach into your small intestine, and which is divided into three parts, by the way. So that's the duodenum the jejunum and the ileum. Once it moves from your small intestine, it goes into the large intestine, the absorption of water takes place, and then finally goes into your rectum where it's stored temporarily, and then finally ingested, right? Um, and that's just elimination of waste, um, undigested food. So these are some common processes and structure that you should remember. So you have peristalsis and you have sphincter muscles, which act like valves. I kind of see them like doors, you know, at each section of the alimentary canal, you know, closing and opening to allow food to move from one section to the other. And of course, we mentioned the accessory glands. All right, ingestion, food moving into your mouth, mechanical digestion taking place using your teeth. And this is just breaking up the food into smaller pieces. Chemical digestion also begins in the mouth and your saliva contains an enzyme called salivary amylase, which starts to digest the starch, <laughs> starch, starch, <laughs> right? So it starts to digest starch, breaking starch down um, into maltose. So you hear they say you should chew 32 times, yeah, because the longer you keep the food in your mouth, the more digestion can actually take place and, you know, less work for your entire digestive system and your body when it gets to the other areas. Because, you know, breaking down the food into smaller pieces also mean that you would be able to increase the surface area so the enzymes can actually break it down even further. And um, as I talk about surface area, please feel free to check out the other videos that really go through what surface area really means and, you know, explaining it in detail. All right, I'll put that link below. Okay. Then, of course, you know, you have the epiglottis, which is at the back of your throat, and that prevents you from going into the wrong tube. <laughs> that is your windpipe or trachea and causing you to choke. All right. Um, so the food moves from your mouth into your esophagus, then into your stomach, 
right? And your stomach can stretch, you know, up to fit up to two liters of food. In the stomach, you have hydrochloric acid with a pH of about two to three, and that kills bacteria that you ingest, right? And it also helps to make the right environment an optimum environment for the enzyme pepsin so that chemical digestion can take place. Pepsin will start breaking down the proteins and um, this will, will break down the protein into polypeptides. Of course, pepsin does not exist like just like pepsin like that in your stomach. No, it's actually in an inactivated form called pepsinogen and only activated by the secretion of the hydrochloric acid, which converts the pepsinogen into pepsin. And that's important so that the stomach doesn't digest itself, considering that muscle walls are actually protein, right? So the stomach is made up out of protein while stomachs are digesting itself. Also, the mucus secreted by the stomach cells protects the stomach line. So it protects it, and the enzyme is actually in an inactivated form. And only when you eat and food is available, that is activated to break down the food. All right. Small intestine is a major organ of the digestion and absorption, chemical digestion. So the small intestine, as, you, as mentioned before, consists of three main parts, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum, right? So a lot of things are happening in the small intestine. Most digestion, the alimentary canal actually takes place in the small intestine and um, absorption also takes place there. So the food leaves the stomach and enters into the duodenum, right? A lot of digestion is gonna take place there. And in the ileum, any final digestion at you know, did not occur in the duodenum will complete in the ileum, but its main function is absorption, and it is very much adapted to do that. So acidic chyme, you know, coming from the stomach, mixes with digestive juices from the pancreas, right? And this is going to neutralize that acid in chyme. Because in the duodenum, these enzymes, in the duodenum, the enzymes there do not work at an acidic pH. So they need to become, they need the right environment, they need the right pH. And so the pancreatic juice and the bile, all of that will serve to neutralize the acid and creating the right or the optimum environment for these enzymes. So you have the liver, the gallbladder, right? The gallbladder will store the bile, which is produced by the liver, and then it will be taken to the duodenum via the bile duct. So enzyme peptidases, digest proteins, you have trypsin in being released by the pancreas, and you have pancreatic amylase, and you have lipase, right? The liver produces bile, as I mentioned before, it's stored in the gallbladder until needed. And the function of bile, as we mentioned earlier, is to break up the fat into smaller pieces. And we call this process emulsification. All right, so we've come to our final slide for today. And um, this is just summarizing the process. No, as I said to you before, I have something very important. And those are some past paper questions to actually revise this topic. And those questions are gonna be looking at enzymes, teeth, and of course, the, the process of digestion if you were to consume a particular meal. Now, this will also look at um, the entire process, you know, from start to finish. So you don't want to miss this next video. <laughs> so this is part one. So please like, and subscribe and click that notification bell so when the next video is posted with those past paper questions you won't miss it all right so that's it for me for today thank you for joining us and do have a wonderful time studying and getting ready for your exam see you same place same time next week bye